Thanks again for checking out the Coding Fanatic YouTube channel. Head on over to CodingFanatic.com and join our mailing list for weekly updates on Android tutorials, career advice, and more. So once again, head on over to CodingFanatic.com and thanks for your support. Welcome back. Now, before we continue with the rest of the tutorial, I want to explain exactly how the activity stack works in Android. And what the activity stack does is it keeps a track of all the different activities that are loaded up in your application. And uh, it keeps them stored in memory so that you can, it, your the OS can quickly access them while you interface with your app. So uh, to show you an example, uh, let's go over to our app. Here you see in the main activity, we have our button to start act two. So to get to the second activity, click on that. And now we're in the second activity. We have another button that starts the third one. And from the third activity, we have a button that starts the first. However, the issue with this design is that as you continue to access different activities, you can, like say you wanted to go back to your first activity, you can either click the back key or you can click act to start act three and then click to start act one. However, like I said earlier, the activity stack contains all the activities that you currently that you that you're using at the moment. So what this does is put strain on your device because it has a large amount of resources being used to maintain all these activities. So if I wanted to get back to our actual original first activity, I'd have to keep clicking back over and over until I got there. So the the for the reason why I'm adding the second and third activities as child activities and making the first one our parent activity is to avoid this issue of using too much memory. It can make your phone, it heats up your phone, it puts a strain on the resor resources and makes it harder for you to use your phone, your phone to use other apps that you have installed. So uh, before, before we continue, I'm just gonna show you a quick example with a few playing cards so that you can really uh, get a better understanding of how this works. So um, after that, next week we'll go into exactly how to add those two child activities. So thank you all again uh, so much for tuning in. And um, you know, don't forget to follow me on social media using the links in the description. Uh, I also have a link to our clicking activities repo in this video as well. So even if you haven't been following along, I have a link to the repo here. So go ahead and check that out. And uh, don't forget if you want to, uh, you should, don't forget to subscribe to Coding Fanatic so you can get regular updates whenever I add new media concerning tutorials, career advice, and more. So uh, once again, thank you so much for tuning in and stay tuned for that uh, example using the playing cards. This is your host, Richard Clark, signing out, and I'll see you all on the next one. Peace. When we start up our application, we're, like, we're starting out with our first activity. Once we click on start act two, it starts our second activity. After that, we click the button to start act three, that starts our third activity. And when we get to act three, there's a button that says click here to start act one. So that takes us back to the first activity. We click the button, it takes us to the next one, and so on. Now, you might be saying to yourself, well, if I wanted to get back to from here to the second activity, I can just click the button to to start the second one. And if I want to get back to the first, I can click the back key, which removes this activity, or I can click the, to start act three. And then from there, if I click again, it'll start act one. However, the problem with this approach is that we have this entire collection of activities sitting here on the activity stack, which takes up so much memory and so much resources from your phone. And if you're building an application, you want it to be resource effective. So what we do instead is we have our main activity and we define our two child activities. And what this allows us to do is from our main activity, when we start act two, let's say we have act one and we make both act two and act three our child activities. This will allow us to click a button to either start act two or act three. And this is great because if you go from act one and you start say act two, you can use a back arrow 
or click the back key and that takes you immediately right back to act one. If you wanted to start act three, you would click a button to start this third act and in order to get back, you would click a back arrow in your action bar or you can use the back key and it takes you back to the first act. So this allows you to reach both of our activities without having to traverse a series of options or a series of buttons. You either start act two or act three from act one and you can get back using the back key or the back arrow. So let's let's get into, that's enough of this example. Why don't we get into the actual steps so we can set this up in our app.